Hello everyone. As the international break offers a temporary pause in Premier League action, Manchester United is already turning its focus towards the next crucial fixture against Southampton. Despite a shaky start to the season, United is looking to regain momentum and rebuild confidence after disappointing back-to-back -back defeats, including the recent 3-0 loss to Liverpool. With several players currently on international duty, manager Eric Ten Hag and his squad will have just over a week to prepare for their next challenge on the South Coast. However, United's struggles go beyond poor results. Key injuries have plagued the squad, affecting both their attacking and defensive setups. The return of players like Rasmus Hoyland and Luke Shaw is eagerly awaited by fans and could be critical to turning around the club's fortunes. Rasmus Hoyland, it's a long-awaited return. United striker Rasmus Hoyland, the 21-year-old who brought in from Atalanta, has yet to make his debut due to a hamstring injury sustained during preseason. Hoyland's absence has been deeply felt, with United lacking a natural centre-forward capable of stretching defences and providing a physical presence up front. Hoyland was a standout performer during preseason until his unfortunate injury in a friendly against Arsenal. His ability to use his pace, strength, and finishing instincts has been sorely missed. Eric Ten Hag has recently provided an update, stating that while Hoyland is back in training, his full return could still be a few weeks away. Fans will be hoping that his return coincides with the Southampton clash after the international break, as his presence could provide the attacking spark United has lacked. The young striker's return is particularly crucial, because so far, Bruno Fernandes has been deployed in an unnatural false nine role, and youngster Joshua Zerki was tasked with leading the line against Liverpool. While these players bring quality to the squad, neither is a true striker like Hoyland, whose return could finally give United the cutting edge they need in front of goal. Again, Luke Shaw's recovery is a United defensive boost. While Hoyland's return is highly anticipated, the status of another key player, Luke Shaw, remains uncertain. Shaw, who missed the start of the season due to a calf injury picked up in preseason, has yet to feature for United this term. Despite playing a prominent role for England during Euro 2024, the left back has been absent for his club. Ten Hag has been cautious with his updates on Shaw's progress, but with the Southampton game scheduled for September 14th, the hope is that Shaw will be available to help shore up a defense that has looked vulnerable in recent games. United has conceded multiple goals in their defeats against Brighton and Liverpool, and Shaw's ability to link up with the midfield and attack, as well as his defensive stability, will be a major asset. However, much like Hoyland, Shaw's fitness will be assessed closer to the match. His availability could be a game-changer, especially given United's next three fixtures against Crystal Palace, Tottenham, and Aston Villa, all of which present significant challenges. Meanwhile, Euro's recovery is a positive step forward. Another important player working his way back to full fitness is the promising 18-year-old defender, Euro. Euro fractured his metatarsal during preseason against Arsenal and subsequently underwent surgery in August. While he is still some time away from returning to action, his recovery has been positive, and he is now walking without crutches and working with the physio team to build strength. United sees Yoro as a key part of their future, and his early performances suggested he could develop into one of the best defenders in the Premier League. While his absence has been a blow, the club views this time as an opportunity for him to settle into Manchester and prepare mentally for his eventual return. Again, with the international break nearing its conclusion, all eyes will be on United's trip to Southampton. The Saints are a team United has historically struggled against, and their relegation to the championship only adds further pressure for United to secure all three points. A win against Southampton is essential for restoring confidence within the squad and easing pressure on Ten Hag, who has faced growing scrutiny after recent results. The return of Hoyland and Shaw could be pivotal in determining United's fate. If both players are fit and available, they will bring much-needed balance and quality to a squad that has lacked cutting edge in attack and stability at the back. However, 
United's issues go beyond player absences. There's a growing debate over whether the club is too reliant on the return of key players instead of developing tactical flexibility and depth within the squad. Recent performances have raised questions about whether United is doing enough to prepare the entire squad to step up when needed. As United navigates this critical phase of the season, the team must reassess its depth, injury management, and tactical approach. Injuries are an inevitable part of football, but building a squad that can thrive despite setbacks is essential for long-term success. While the return of Hoyland and Shaw will certainly be a boost, relying too heavily on a few players could be risky in a long, grueling season. United must also explore solutions within their current squad, ensuring that every player is prepared to step up when called upon. The club has invested heavily in the transfer market, but now is the time to see if that investment has truly strengthened the team in all areas. Manchester United's season is still in its early stages, but the next few weeks could shape its trajectory. The return of Rasmus Hoyland and Luke Shaw will provide a much-needed lift, but the club must also address deeper issues regarding squad depth and adaptability. As fans, we must continue to support the team while demanding more from the club's planning and execution. The future of Manchester United lies not in waiting for key players to return, but in building a squad where every player is ready to perform at the highest level, regardless of the circumstances. In other news, this is what Zinedine Zidane has said about possible return to management amid Manchester United links. Zinedine Zidane has previously been heavily linked with the Manchester United job and has now dropped a fresh hint that he could be ready to return to management. He has expressed his openness about a potential return to football management. Since ending his second stint at Real Madrid three years ago, Zidane, 52, has been linked with several high-profile jobs, including the Manchester United hot seat. But despite these thrilling news, he has yet to manage again. Interest in Zidane's next career move has been reignited again after he attended a real Betis training session. That appearance coincides with increasing scrutiny on Eric Ten Hag at Old Trafford after a disappointing start to this season. The club's new hierarchy under Sir Jim Ratcliffe considered other options this summer, including Graham Potter, Thomas Tuchel, and Gareth Southgate. French sports newspaper L'Equipe has also reported Zidane's interest in replacing Ten Hag. While attending a premiering documentary about his former Juventus coach, Marcelo Lippi, earlier this year, Zidane addressed the question of a coaching comeback, stating, Why not? Anything can happen. Now I'm doing other things, but we'll see. I'd certainly like to return to the bench. Zidane has taken a considerable break from coaching, but is adamant about only returning for the right job. Detailing his stance to L'Equipe in 2022, he proclaimed, Never say never, especially when you are a coach today. If I go back to a club, it is to win. I say this with all modesty. That's why I can't just go anywhere. For other reasons too. Certain conditions make things more difficult. When someone says to me, do you want to go to Manchester United? I understand English, but I don't fully master it. I know there are coaches who go to clubs without speaking the language, but I work differently. To win, many elements come into play. It's a global context. I know what I need to win. Of course, I might not always win, but I know that you need to have this, this, and this. And I want to do everything on my side to optimize my chances of victory. On other hand, Manchester United midfielder agrees to leave club, but on one condition. Casemiro has endured a disastrous start to the season, but is not in a rush to quit Manchester United. Casemiro, 32, was made available for transfer during the summer transfer window, but a lack of offers meant he stayed beyond last Friday's deadline. And a poor first-half performance against Liverpool last Sunday, which included losing possession in the build-up to Luis Diaz's two goals, saw the Brazilian hauled off at half-time. Consequently, speculation surrounding the midfielder's Old Trafford future has ramped up. For example, surprise reports this week have linked the 32-year-old with a late move to Turkey. The Super League's window is open until the 13th of September, and Casemiro has been mooted as a possible target for Galatasaray. However, despite the Lions being able to capture Napoli's Victor Osimhen, the United midfielder is proving a tougher target to convince. According to a recent report from ESPN, the South American will not quit the Red Devils, 
where he earns a staggering 350,000 of pounds per week. Unless he is informed he has no future under Eric Ten Hag. United's failure to communicate their desire to part ways with their number 18 will see the former Real Madrid star remain at Old Trafford until at least the end of the season, when he will then have one year left on his deal. During his two years with the Red Devils, Casemiro has directly contributed to 21 goals in 87 games in all competitions. Meanwhile, Ajax sporting director Alex Crowes has revealed that the club did have Christian Eriksen on their list of transfer targets this summer. A deal never materialized, and the Denmark veteran remained at Manchester United, despite being strongly tipped to leave before the start of the 2024-25 campaign. It has now been explained why Ajax didn't launch a pursuit to sign Eriksen. The Dutch giants didn't resign the 32-year-old because they were unable to create space to make the move happen. Eriksen was linked to both Ajax and Anderlecht during the summer. He came off the bench to make his first appearance of the season against Liverpool at the weekend. Speaking to Ajax TV, as quoted by ESPN NL, Crows has confirmed the club's interest. He was definitely on the list, on the long list, he said. A boy from the club, experience, routine, and a good footballer. Ultimately, we were unable to create space for this due to various circumstances. Ericsson rejected the chance to join Real Betis on deadline day, as per Fabrizio Romano. There was no agreement with the player or club, but the Spanish club tried to sign the experienced midfielder. In other news, Man United's new sporting director, Dan Ashworth, will start to flex his muscles next year, and a focus on youth will mean the end of the road for two experienced stars. With the Ineos ownership of the footballing side of the business now in full swing, there's a clear plan ahead for the next few transfer windows. Sir Jim Ratcliffe put his money where his mouth is during the summer, with Joshua Zerxi, Lenny Yoro, Matthijs De Ligt, Nusser Mazraoui, and Manuel Ugarte all arriving. So, is Man United ready to turn to youth in order to progress? Yes, perhaps above all others, it's the signing of Ugarte that will have the most notable impact. That's because, as Give Me Sport note, he is expected to partner Kabi Mainu in a new-look central midfield partnership for the Red Devils. What that means in practice is that both Christian Eriksen and Casemiro aren't going to get a look-in, and, as a result, the outlets suggest that both will be sold. After the debacle against Liverpool at Old Trafford last weekend, the Brazilian can certainly have no complaints. If United are to go some way towards capturing their former glories, then tough decisions need to be made. Frankly, you don't go all out to buy a new player if he isn't going to be first choice. So once Ugarte is up to speed fitness-wise, there will be an expectation that he'll be thrown straight into the middle of the park. The pressure would then all be on Eric Ten Hag's shoulders as he looks to meld the team together and ensure continued success on the pitch. Two trophies in two years isn't the worst record in the world. However, it's the manner of United's performances under the Dutchman which have been a worry, again and again. Manchester United remain in the hunt for Adrian Rabiot. Manchester United's midfield still looks as brittle as seen from the 0-3, to three, thrashing at the hands of Liverpool, and Eric Ten Hag must find an answer soon if he is to have a job. Casemiro was overrun in midfield, a continuing theme from last season, and fans are hoping Manuel Ugarte's acquisition can prove to be spark needed for an upturn in fortunes. But Ten Hag has already suggested that the Uruguayan needs more time to adapt to his new surroundings. With Kabi Mainu looking like he needs a rest, and with Christian Eriksen unlikely to be the answer at this stage of his career, United looks short on quality in the middle of the park, especially following Scott McTominay's departure. Ineos had initially hoped to sign more than one midfielder in the summer, but a deal for former loanee Sofian Amrabat failed to materialize despite the manager's wishes. The free agent market could provide a stopgap solution with rumors of a move for Yusuf Yazici and Adrian Rabio doing the rounds recently. The Frenchman, in fact, has been a target for the Red Devils ever since Ten Hag took over. However, his wage demands meant a move never materialized. 
The 29-year-old's Juventus contract ended in the summer, and despite his services being offered to multiple clubs all across Europe, no concrete bid has been received. The People's Person relayed that Cristiano Ronaldo wants Rabiot to join him at Al Nasser, while there is also interest from Turkai. Galatasaray have offered him a lucrative deal, but as per team talk, United's name cannot be removed from the equation just yet, while Newcastle also remain in the mix. However, the player's wage demands could scupper a potential move. Ineos had the clear objective to reduce the team's overall age while also staying away from mercenaries looking for their last payday, a category of players the Glazers were huge fans of. Manchester United and Newcastle remain in the mix to sign a top free agent midfielder despite an offer from Turkish giants Galatasaray already being on the table, sources have told Team Talk. The Turkish club has already presented an offer to the player who, however, is currently stalling because his desire remains to play in the Premier League. United, after selling Scott McTominay, the bad performance of Casemiro against Liverpool, and with Christian Eriksen now on the fringes of the project, have held internal evaluations on a possible new free agent midfielder. However, the possible arrival of Rabiot is complicated by the strategies defined by the Ineos group that would like to progressively exclude players around 30 years of age and with contracts that are too onerous, as Rabiot is asking. The former PSG star would certainly be an improvement on Ten Hag's current options, but it is unlikely to occur at this stage. On the other side, understand it's confirmed that Eric Ten Hag, given four games to save his Manchester United job. Eric Ten Hag was close to a sacking last season after Manchester United recorded their worst ever Premier League finish, but survived on the back of a memorable FA Cup triumph against fierce rivals Manchester City. Ineo spoke with multiple candidates before deciding to stick with the Dutchman and even going on to back him significantly in the transfer market. But the new season has started in identical fashion, with the Red Devils losing three out of four games, including a dismal 0-3 to three defeat at the hands of arch-rivals Liverpool last weekend. While the club hierarchy have so far been heard backing the former Ajax coach to come good eventually, Murmurs of the new co-owners being on the lookout for Ten Hag's replacement continue to do the rounds. He needs to improve the team's style of play drastically if he is to earn a stay of execution with Givmisport, claiming Ineos have given him four games to save his United career. Thankfully for the Dutch manager, the next run of matches look easy enough on paper with a trip to 19th place Southampton up next, after the resumption of club football, following the end of the international break. After that, the Red Devils will face League One Barnsley in the Carabao Cup before facing Crystal Palace in the league and FC Twente in the first game of this season's Europa League. All winnable fixtures, but if a repeat of last season's 0-4 drubbing at the hands of the Eagles were to occur, there might be an immediate change made. Insiders say the Dutchman has just four more Premier League games to save his job with Ratcliffe and his new layer of management around and above Ten Hag, wanting progress not promises. United's trip to Russell Martin's newly promoted Southampton after the international break is simply a must-win game. And any repeat of the embarrassing 4-0 debacle that unfolded at Crystal Palace last season when United traveled to Selhurst Park on September 21st might even trigger instant change. If Ten Hag can navigate those tests, the next two, Tottenham at home and Aston Villa away, will sway Ratcliffe as to Ten Hag's ability to provide the necessary improvement. Journalist Steve Bates makes clear in his article that Ineos are far from impressed with the game model seen this season, finding many similarities with what had transpired last time out. Hopefully, Ten Hag can start getting a tune out of the squad in the games to come and build up ahead of steam, or else lasting till the new year looks a daunting task at present. Meanwhile, yesterday evening, Manchester United have submitted a 25-man squad to UEFA ahead of our participation in the Europa League. The Reds have included the likes of defenders Tyrell Malaysia, who missed last season due to injury, and Harry Amass on our list, while our senior summer recruits also feature. Kobe Mainu and Alejandro Garnacho are eligible as members of the B list, which is for club-trained players who have been with their current side for a minimum of two years. Hence, left-back Amass is on the main list, 
as he only joined from Watford in 2023, but Toby Collier and Ethan Wheatley are among those who will be available to play. Eric Ten Hag's men begin the European campaign with a home game against one of his former clubs, FC Twente, on Wednesday, 25th September. Tickets are available to buy for the game against the Dutch outfit. So, the players selected are following. Goalkeepers are Andre Onana, Altai Bayindir, Tom Heaton, Dermot Mee. Defenders are Harry Amass, Diogo Delo, Matthijs De Ligt, Johnny Evans, Victor Lindelof, Harry Maguire, Tyrell Malaysia, Lissandro Martinez, Nusser Mazraoui, Luke Shaw, Lenny Yoro. Midfielders are Casemiro, Christian Eriksen, Bruno Fernandes, Mason Mount, Manuel Ugarte. Forwards are Ahmad, Anthony, Rasmus Hojland, Marcus Rashford, Joshua Xerxes. So, what you have to know is that players can be added from the B list.